This rabbi here reveals the shocking and disturbing details about the evil that is going on in our culture and in our society today. The first one's called the the possessor. The second one's called, the second one um, is the, the, enchantress. the enchantress, and the third one is called the destroyer. And this is where it goes because when you, you start with you start with the turning away, then you have sex. It always happens this way: sexuality, all that. Then you get to the third one, which is the principality by which they offered up their children. Parents offered their children as sacrifices. Um, that was part of the pagan world. That was, it was not safe to be a child in the pagan world. Children were abused, they were sexualized, and they were killed. We live in a society that has aborted God. We live in a society that has decided to throw God away. Millions and millions of babies are being murdered in our world on a daily basis. This is a great evil in the sight of God. Getting an abortion is not easy. Making that decision it's not easy. It's not something people do lightly. It's not something that you can just do it. Here's one of the other posts that I referenced a couple of seconds ago. So how does a satanic abortion ceremony even work? They are celebrating it and admiring it. They literally made a whole Canva carousel post about it, teaching all of their followers exactly how to complete a satanic abortion ceremony. To me, it is ironic that those who pride themselves on defending the rights of the weak murder them in the womb when they are the most weak. What kind of hypocrisy is that? Self-congratulating pseudo-humanitarian advocate a deadly force of violence unleashed against infants that makes the Nazi Holocaust look mild by comparison. Killing of babies is not a new thing in our society, for it has been prevalent during the times of the patriarch in the Bible. The children of Israel did detestable things in the sight of God, for they sacrificed killed and murdered their babies to the evil deity called Molech. When you look at Jeremiah, I mean, he says, you're going to be judged, Israel, because of what you did to your children. Well, so what it's saying, and the, the warning of Jesus is, you know, we can call him Molech, which right. actually means king, but they offered up their children. These are people right. who once knew God, they're offering up their children. So what it means is that as America goes and the West goes, it's going to start offering up its children. And that's exactly what happens. You have, when you get to the end of the 60s, 1970, we begin offering up our children in abortion. And we say, well, well, how do we compare that? Well, remember Jesus said they come back worse. Israel offered up thousands of its children. We have offered up millions of our children. Yeah. Find a quiet space. Bring a mirror if you can. Just before taking the medication, gaze at your reflection and focus on your personhood. Hone in, hone in on your intent. Your responsibility is to you. So already, on slide one, they're saying the quiet part out loud. They're admitting that this is an egotistical and self-centered act where you are valuing your life over the life of somebody else who is more vulnerable and totally reliant upon you to keep them alive. A life that is totally innocent and has done nothing wrong except simply come into existence because of something that you did. And it's ironic when they talk about responsibility, you know, your responsibility to you, when you are literally not taking responsibility for your actions and the life that your actions resulted in. In our world, we're slaughtering between 50 and 60 million babies babies a year. In the United States, um, on record, is 1.5 million abortions a year. Every third baby conceived is murdered in the womb. 4,000 a day, plus 170 an hour. Planned Parenthood alone kills one every 95 seconds. Our nation has abandoned God. Our nation has decided to exchange the truth for a lie. They have decided to exchange the truth of God to the truth of the devil, the evil one our accuser and our adversary for he's a liar and a murderer for jesus tells us that when he lies he speaks his native language millions upon millions upon millions of infants in the womb slaughtered the death toll beyond anything anyone has ever seen in humanity to infants and what you need to understand is god doesn't just judge individually he judges collective he judges men and nations he judges them together what he did in this debate back in 2003 was he showed a photograph of a 21-week-old fetus he said had been spared abortion by doctors who operated on the womb to correct a birth defect. And he showed a picture in the United States Senate. This is the picture he showed. You see the hand here grasping the doctor's finger as they're about to operate in the womb at 21 weeks. Here's a better picture. As you can see, the arm coming out of the womb and the doctor holding the arm. So he shows this in the United States Senate and he says this to Senator Barbara Boxer. At that time, she was the senator in California. 
He says, is little Samuel's hand the hand of a person or is it the hand of a piece of property? And here's what Barbara Boxer said. I am not a doctor and I am not God. I trust other human beings to make these decisions. Now question, do you have to be a doctor or do you have to be God to know that that's a human being? For God tells us in Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. Women and weak men have decided to kill babies, to kill innocent babies in the womb. This is wicked and this is evil and there will be judgment for this. For the psalmist tells us, for you created me in my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. The um, Physicians Association of Planned Parenthood released this statement, quote, abortion is a treatment for unwanted pregnancy, the second sexually transmitted disease. Pregnancy is a sexually transmitted disease. Our nation and others are murdering a whole generation of humans in mass infanticide that was legalized in January of 1973 by the Roe v. Wade decision made by an unrighteous group of people on the Supreme Court. Now 43 percent of all women have an abortion and 47 percent of abortions are repeats. Comments like this. Historically, this is what we call human sacrifice, which is something that people have said about abortion for a while. And I never really commented on it or inserted myself into the conversation. I've just kind of listened and taken it all in. But now that they are calling it a satanic blood ritual, I think it's the time. I think we can all bring this into the conversation. I do not think it needs to be taboo because to be honest, it is a sacrifice. You are sacrificing a life for your own benefit, for your own gain. And people are not silent about it. This is not some quiet thing now. People are proudly saying that they are doing this. I mean, think about all the celebrities that praise abortion and claim that they could not be successful without having an abortion, that they are so grateful because they would not be where they are without it. Like this. Here I was, sitting in Los Angeles in my beautiful office of hey, my own late night talk show. Soon I would be driving my hybrid car to my beautiful home to kiss my two beautiful and healthy children and my husband who had taken the year off to parent so I could focus on my career. And I have all of this, all of it. I hate this bitch. Because I was allowed bodily autonomy at 15. I will not be shamed into being quiet. We will not be shamed into being quiet, never again. And when, when I looked, I won't go into the detail, but in the book, when you compare child sacrifice, the ancient one, and you compare abortion, it, it has all these parallels. Example, that you know which children were offered up to this God more than any other? The children of the poor. Which children are aborted yep. more? Than, it's That's the children right. of the poor. That's right. You know, back then, they actually, this is how, how crazy it is. They actually considered abortion to be something sacred. Well, they, abortion, by the way, they also had abortion. Abortion and literally yep. infanticide. Yep. And, and by the way, it was only the gospel that ended all this in the world for the, for the most part. But, it's, but they actually, they considered it sacred. Modern day abortionists and radical, there, there are radical feminists, you know, with abortion. And they actually will call abortion a sacred act, a sacrament. Mm. And some will even say it's a sacrifice, mm. but it is spiritual. That's why it's so irrational. In this country, over 3,000 babies a day are murdered in the womb. And we kind of gloss over that as well because we don't see it. This is spiritual warfare. Do you understand the state a man's mind has to be in in order for him to give the word? to murder thousands of baby boys, to wipe out every baby boy two years old and younger in an entire region, that is evil. That is spiritual warfare. And that's what we're dealing with and have been dealing with since 1973. Evil, wicked, spiritual warfare. And there are people today who are enraged. There are people who are actually in mourning today. Do, 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 you, do you hear me? 
There are people who are on their knees, sobbing in tears because something less than 3,000 plus babies a day are going to be murdered in this country. And for them, that is just unthinkable. Um, well, my administrators um, were all very supportive of it. Um, they actually helped me um, have the camera. They helped. I did all the editing. I found the music. I'm, I mean, that's all me. It's mostly my production. I just had a really great team of women behind me who... Um, <laughs> wanted to help stop the stigma of abortion okay and, and, and so hold on so emily you, uh, let me let me ask a crazy question that you're gonna uh, first of all you knew you're gonna take heat when you did this right you understand you're gonna be it's it's a controversial topic you're well aware of it you're an abortion counselor and doing this has gotta you gotta be to know my qu i'm gonna ask a crazy question okay did you get pregnant in order to do this video right a lot of people <laughs> on twitter said the same thing um and you realize that i'm gonna have to laugh at that right like, uh, absolutely. If, it, if it's pregnant. laughable, I hope it is. I, I'm relieved to see you laugh. Okay. Uh, our panel's Emily. got lots of questions for you, so here's yes. Samantha. Emily, okay, first of all, I'm pro-choice, but your message was lost to me when you wrote in your essay that you were having sex, but you were not using birth control. So was your was abortion your form of birth control? And is so that the actually, message you want to put out there? So actually, what I want to clarify is that I was not, uh, I did not have a a single partner like I didn't I was not in a relationship and to be honest let's talk about the fact that hormonal birth control can be very scary they have created their own gods in form of career wealth properties and self-validation and they all bow down to them in the altar of their own mind but when you have when you have an advocacy of uh, support for the slaughter of infants and and homosexuality and complete sexual freedom um, you have a formula for divine judgment the writer of Hebrews warns us that it is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. He also tells us that it is appointed for man to die once and after death is judgment. Every living soul shall answer to God. For Paul tells us in his letter to the Philippines that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. And Mary goes and she visits Elizabeth and look what happens. This is in Luke chapter 1. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the choice, the blob of tissue, the fetus, no, the baby leapt in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. How did we ever get here where we just massacre infants in the safest place in the womb, where we literally go in there and kill them? How did we get to this place? Well, you just have to go back and understand that Satan is a murderer from the beginning, right? This is satanic. This is a satanic thing. He is the father of lies and he's the father of murder. He is the first murderer. He would have murdered God if he could have, deicide in heaven, and he was thrown out. And when he came down to earth, he moved Cain to kill Abel and unleashed on the world the whole array of murders that has characterized human existence goes on relentlessly in everything from slaughtering little infants in the safest place in the womb to massacring people uh, the way we're seeing it around the world and in the Middle East even now and everything in between. Satan particularly goes after babies. He, he did in Moses' day. He did in Jesus' day. Uh, he wanted to kill all the, the young children in Egypt because th of the fear that a deliverer would come. He wanted to kill all of the two-year-old and under babies in uh, and around Jerusalem for fear that the king was coming. Satan is a murderer. All of this is reflective of satanic hatred of the purposes of God and the life that God creates. It is time to repent and turn to God. It is time to humble yourself to the Most High Holy God our Master and Savior Jesus Christ. We are all sinful, depraved and wicked in our nature, but God can see us as holy and as righteous by imputing in us the righteousness of His Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for those who would believe. For Paul tells us in Romans, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. Whoever confesses that Jesus is Lord and He was raised from the dead by God shall be saved. Seek the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind seek the lord hey guys this is it for this video if you find this video interesting please do like share and subscribe if you want to support this channel please join our membership and also try to watch the videos to the end peace and love of christ to you all
see you in our next video hello friends youtube is suppressing most of our videos in our channel i know this can be very frustrating whenever i come across my videos keep sharing and i'll also appreciate it if you join our membership that way i can post more videos in the membership they are restricting the videos based on um, obvious reasons because obviously i'm sharing the truth of the gospel but that is okay because god will win stay safe